Now, before you get the top shock bolts out of place, you get one, but you gotta get this out of here to be able to lower it down. This is the upper mount for your sway bar. Sure is handy having an electric ratchet. I can tell you that big time for sure. Sorry for the shaky cam. Now, this will, will slide down out of there, believe it or not. Oh, on this side, we have interference from the exhaust system. Here we go. We got her out. So now you can see the bolts up in there for our top mounts. And for that, we're going to use a long extension with a flex socket on the end. And I'll back them out. And then I'm going to put a jack between the spring and the frame to push my wheel down further to get this off because uh, not so much to get this shock off, but to get the new one on. Hold on to your hats. You can see I have a bottle jack in between the frame and my spring. And I have, the truck is up on jack stands, but because the jack stands are in front of the axle, the truck tends to tip towards the back a little bit still. So I have a jack under the trailer hitch or the bumper and uh, that still doesn't allow this to drop down enough for these to come get back on because these are considerably stiffer than the shocks that came off especially with the coils so by doing that I push the spring and the axle down and I can still slide this on and I still had to use a pry bar under here over the axle to get it come up that last little bit to slide on here so now it's just a matter of modifying my uh, sway bar bracket for this side and finish putting it back together. Now you can see I've stuck the sway bar bracket back up in there and it's not back tight enough for the bolt hole to line up quite yet. And I'm already hitting right there on my spring. And that's the reason for the modification of that bracket. So we'll get that one modified and put it back in. Yeah, what so it looks we're going like. to have to modify this bracket for the sway bar. And you can see where I have marked it across here and down here to clear the spring on the coil over shocks. Well, let's take it down to the shop and we'll trim it. Here you can see the bracket back in place. And we have clearance for our coil spring around the shock absorber now. And uh, I can actually get my hand up and around and right up in behind there. So there's plenty of clearance and it's still strong enough. I couldn't cut it off with the uh, bandsaw. I ended up having to use a cutoff wheel on my side angle grinder and uh, a little trimming up. Now I can bolt my um, sway bar back up into place there and that will finish off the first side. You can see my shock absorber is all in place there now. And you can see what we're taking out over here are these Bilstein shocks. Nice shock absorbers but they're not low levelers. They're not um, they don't give you extra boost in load capacity so that's what we want and uh, if you look up in there you can see where that bracket is now for the sway bar and the tight clearance we have you have to actually unbolt the sway bar from the rear end and it's only bolted on with these humongous uh, muffler clamps basically what they are so uh, I've got it all unbolted on this side, first side down, and one side to go. Hold on to your hats. I may have shared this tip before, but I bought a few more four-foot 
LED bulbs to go up here in the carport, give me a little more light. And I have uh, an extra one at the moment. Uh, it probably will get used. But they make great drop lights. Long area, and they're lightweight, and they move around. It helps you to see what you're doing. That's very important when you're an old guy like me. And another tip. These links for the sway bar, one end is bigger than the other. Make sure you put the small end on the top. That way you maintain your clearance up there. And as you can see, we've got good clearance now. And as the suspension works, it's fully extended now. It will actually swing towards the front and gain more so clearance. So that's how you make a few adaptations for uh, putting coilover springs on the back of an 80, 90, 93, 2003 GMC Sonoma extended cab. This is not four wheel drive. Some of these would not be issues if it was four wheel drive. The sway bar would not be an issue because it's in a different location. But uh, do yourself a favor and just disconnect your sway bar right off the bat and save yourself that headache and then you will have to modify the sway bar bracket up in there to clear your springs and other than that it's pretty straightforward as you saw me doing and now I have extra load capacity and uh, I can tell you these shocks are plenty stiff yipper now my next project is going to be going further forward and I'll have to jack up on the front end is I've got to replace that center bearing or carrier bearing or whatever you want to call it up in there and I believe that is where I'm getting the vibration from when I'm driving it appears that it may be broken away at the top. So, that'll be our next project. And we'll fully inspect the CV joints when we get them out, because we got to pull the drive shaft to do that. Drive shafts, plural. Don't ask me why they've got two drive shafts in this. If I had been thinking, I should have measured probably would have been different but I should have measured the drive shaft in my O2 although it probably would have been different because it was four-wheel drive and had a transfer case on the back which made the drive shaft shorter anyway that's for another project for another day thanks for watching commenting subscribing thumbs up sharing all them good things until the next time this is George the shade tree fix it man saying bye for now I want to do a shout out to my good friend Micah Dubbin you all know him as Big Daddy 1992 from out there in Minnesota where I used to be uh, several years ago now when I still lived in Minnesota actually he sent me this toolkit and I'll tell you what it's a, a godsend for me because I could take this down on the floor with me when I'm crawling around down underneath my truck. And it has basic sizes. It's got both metric and standard deep sockets, which is unusual in these kind of kits. And, uh, and it has four of each uh, metric and standard wrenches plus all these short sockets. And it's got these driver bits over here, too. So I just want to say thank you again, Micah. I think I already did a long time ago when you sent it to me. And, uh, but I really appreciate it. And I think of you every time I use it, which is quite often. Bye now.